Hello, honors physics students. Okay, so make sure you have your notes page in front of you, which we originally done ray diagrams for mirrors, turned over to the other side. Now we're going to be doing it for lenses. And as I just mentioned in the last video, uh, a lot of the stuff we've done for mirrors just directly applies to what we've done, what we're going to be doing now for lenses, a lot of the same vocabulary, really a lot of the same stuff. So it's just kind of repeat. Okay, so here's our generic ray diagram here, and we're going to go right ahead and label F as the first tick mark away from the center of the lens, in which case we could also mark 2F and 3F. And this time we are marking it, remember, on both sides of the lens because the lens does have two focal points. We only done it on one side for the mirror because there's only one focal point for the mirror. This is still our principal axis going all the way across. We label this as the object, and we're going to get going on our principal rays. So at the top of your page is a place to record all the principal rays, and really this is going to be pretty much the exact same thing we've done before, obviously with some, some differences, some important differences, but the first one's going to be parallel, which I bet you could have guessed because that was the first one we did on the mirror side, right? Just put the page over, you should see. Okay, so what does the parallel ray do? Well, we already saw what it did, right? We know that when we show, I showed you the picture there of all the parallel rays of light going through the converging or convex lens, they're going to meet there at the focal point, which means, of course, it's going to go through the focal point. But it gets a little more complicated than that. So what I've done here on the upper right-hand side is I have a, a magnified view of the top of the lens. Let's watch what happens. So here's a ray of light that's parallel to the principal axis coming in here, and we know it's going to enter the new medium, and so we think about this as a refraction problem, a Snell's Law problem, in which case we would draw a normal. So go ahead and draw a normal perpendicular to the surface of the lens of that location, like this. Remember, we draw as a dashed line because it's imaginary. And then we ask ourselves the usual questions. As light goes from the air surrounding the lens into the plastic or glass of the lens, does it speed up or slow down? Well, of course it slows down. So is that bending towards or away? That's bending towards. What does that look like? Well, remember, if you're having trouble visualizing this, you can always tilt your paper. So if you need to see it go top to bottom, whatever it is. But you should see it gets deviated a little bit this way, sort of towards the bottom of the page, to a, a smaller angle to the normal. So already that's a pretty small angle, but this is an even smaller angle. But now it's going to exit, going from the glass or plastic lens back into the air. So is it speeding up or slowing down? That's speeding up, right? Bending towards or away? That's bending away. So we draw another normal here at this location, perpendicular to the surface of the lens there. And it's going to bend away from the normal. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but certainly it's got to get to a, a larger angle away. And of course, this is what I showed you with the, the simulation picture there. The parallel ray of light going through what looks like a triangular prism at the top of the lens gets deviated to the bottom of the screen. Okay, so what really happens is this ray of light is going to refract to the left side and the right side. And every single ray of light we have coming off this object is going to refract twice at the first edge and the second edge of the lens, and that's a lot. So we're not going to do that. We're going to be making an approximation, and the approximation is very good as long as we keep the lenses thin. And if you look at the notes page, your notes, we talked about we're only doing this for thin lenses, so there's a very good approximation. So we're going to pretend that the ray of light only refracts once through the focal point on the other side, not going through two refractions, but just going through the lens, refracting once, and then going through the focal point on the other side. And we're going to pretend it happens right there at the midpoint. So I want you to draw a dashed line that goes right through the two tips of the lens, and really through this tick mark as well. I couldn't quite get it to be exactly there. I want you to try to go right through the center of the lens, and also extend this dashed line above and below. Trust me, this is going to be very good for how you do ray diagrams as you move forward here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a parallel ray of light going from the tip of the arrow, tip of the object, and then it's going to stop here halfway through the lens. Do a little better job than I did of drawing here on the PowerPoint, but it should stop right here at the halfway mark. And we're going to pretend it refracts just once there and goes through the focal point on the other side. Remember, there's a lens. Light's not reflecting off of it. It's going through to the other side, refracting through the focal point. In fact, if you look at these words and compare it to the other side, it was reflecting through the focal point for mirrors, it's refracting through the focal point for lenses because that's the big difference. Light goes through the lens to the other side. And again, we want to make it nice and long because we don't know how long of a, a ray we're going to need, but make sure we go right through that focal point. And here I've labeled number one to correlate with our listing of parallel of the principal rays. What do you think the second principal ray might be? Hopefully you guessed central, because that's exactly what we do for mirrors, right? So here we're aiming for the center of the lens, just like we aim for the center of the mirror. Let's go back to this picture in the upper right-hand corner, because just before we had modeled a lens as a triangular prism on top of a rectangular prism. So I want you to draw the imaginary rectangular prism here near the, you know, the bottom portion of this top part of the, le of the lens. And here we have a ray of light that's heading towards the center of the lens, which we have here, near where it approximates a rectangular prism. Well, wait a second, we've seen this before. We know exactly what's going to happen. You'll recall back in problem 16 for our previous topic, we looked at light going through a rectangular prism. Here's what that looks like. Light entered in the air, it refracted through the rectangular prism, it came out into the air, and we saw 
by doing the math and also by literally seeing just like this that the light coming in that light coming out came out as parallel rays so that's what's going to happen here right the light's going to refract towards the normal as it enters the prism it enters in this case the lens we come back out into the air refracting away from the normal and this entrance ray and this exit ray are parallel to each other we've already seen this idea but recall we're doing this for thin lenses so watch what happens when i make this rectangular prism narrower and narrower here's the light ray coming in here's the light ray coming out and you should notice that these two rays are almost the same it makes this even narrower and narrower it really doesn't get deviated very much at all and so we're going to make an approximation this central ray which is near the center of the lens just goes straight through it's not exactly right but it's a really good approximation so this is easy all we do is start from the tip of the object aim directly for the center of the lens which is marked where the principal axis intersects that dashed line that you drew and then just keep going and you just keep going until you intersect the other one now just because of the dimensions of this particular ray diagram it may actually end up a little bit off your page it mine's very very close to being off the edge of my screen but you should see eventually they will meet okay and here I'm number two so it correlates with our listing of principal rays so what do you think our third principal ray might be well hopefully you guessed focal because that's what we did before and if you look back what did the focal ray do for mirrors so what do you think this is going to do for lenses it's the same idea except instead of reflecting of course it's going to refract through parallel to the principal axis so here's our light ray that starts the tip of the object goes through the focal points and here is why it's so important that we do our dashed line larger than the lens itself these ray diagrams are really just sort of abstract pictures of what happens they're not exactly to scale to life size so we don't know how tall the lens really is relative to the object. We can pretend the lens is as tall as we need it to be. And so that's why we extend this dash line above and below. So here we start from the tip of the object. We go through this focal point on the left side until we reach the dashed line. You may have to extend your dashed line. And we know it's going to refract parallel to the principal axis, just like for mirrors reflected parallel to the principal axis. So here it refracts parallel and it's going to meet over here pretty much the same location as the other two mine's off by maybe just a little bit but hopefully yours is a little better i label it with number three to indicate number three there and now of course remember the ray diagram is not complete until we draw the image so we draw it from the principal axis down to the connection point you may have to imagine yours if it's off the page but there it is and label it as the image our last step of course is to describe our image so pick one word from each of the three categories of image descriptions is it upright or inverted well it's clearly inverted Here's the original object. Here's the image. Is it magnified, reduced, or life size? This is clearly magnified. It's huge. Is it real or virtual? So pause the video for a second. Think about the definition of real and virtual. Write down what you think it is. Okay. So you say real or virtual. Well, remember the light is going through the lens over to here. These light rays actually converge over here. If I were to put a screen over here, would these light rays actually go on to it? You bet they would. That makes it a real image. Now, you may have got confused because we're on the other side of the lens, but remember, it was virtual for the other side of the mirror because light didn't actually go through the mirror. This, these light rays are actually going through the lens. That's the, one of the main differences, that light refracts through the other side. So on the opposite side is the real side for a lens. It's on the same side for a mirror because the light reflects off the mirror. 